Hello. You're listening to the audio version of Parkrun Magazine. Thanks so much for joining us. This audio mag is a place to find out more about leading a happier and healthier lifestyle, as well as hearing from the communities and people at the heart of Parkrun events across the United Kingdom. We are back with the second episode of Series 5 of the audio version of Parkrun Magazine. During this series, we're sharing some of the stories that featured in Issue 5 of the printed edition of the magazine. In this episode, we'll learn all about the power of play, including how to play some games that might take you right back to your own childhood. And we'll also learn about a whole range of new and inclusive running clubs that are proving that there's a group out there for everyone. But first, let's go and play. We probably all remember being a kid and just loving the freedom and simplicity of playing with our friends. But these days, it can be hard to find the time and space to let children run free. So today, we're exploring the power of play, why it's important and how you can get involved yourself. It's time to play. The great thing about playing is that you don't need an app or a book of rules. You just see what happens. However, children don't always have the chance to play outside for hours like their grandparents or parents might have done. Our lives are more digitally focused, and a house with a garden or safe playground on our estate isn't something we can all take for granted. Thankfully, some of the open spaces where you might find a park run are also great places for children to play. That is, if the British weather allows. Parents and carers can find mutual support in taking children to meet up with others outside. So let's find out a bit more why play is so important and discover an organisation that's helping us to get together to play. But first, here's a game you might like to try. It's called Traffic Lights, and you'll soon see why. Traffic Lights is a really simple game, but you can add as many actions as you like. First, pick someone who will call out the colours or actions. Everyone else spreads out but make sure you can hear whoever is choosing the colours. If red is called out, everyone playing must stand still. Amber means move around slowly. Green means move around as fast as you can. You can add lots of other actions to this game. Think of anything you like to do with traffic. So perhaps roundabout could mean turning around on the spot. Or traffic jam means everyone playing has to stand really close to each other and move slowly. That sounds like such a simple, fun game. But here's a question. Why is play so important for kids anyway? And why is it so essential to try to give them that chance to play safely outside? We spoke to an expert to find out. Educational psychologist Dr Dan O'Hare has the answers. It's important for kids to play because it's absolutely essential to their development he explains. Cognitive development, problem solving, physical development, gross motor skills, fine motor skills, their ability to manipulate things, and also social development, so how they interact with others, how they understand language and social rules and expectations. It sounds like play can be amazing for giving children space to grow and explore. But is this the only reason play is good? If we let children play, they can develop skills, says Dan. That's good, but it's not the reason for play. Play is something that's mirrored across the animal kingdom, but we shouldn't see play instrumentally, as if it has to be for something else. Does playing outdoors make a difference? Being outside, there's perhaps more unpredictability. There's sometimes a higher chance of risk, Dan says, but risk doesn't necessarily mean danger. Being outside means children will encounter different situations, wet grass or leaves maybe, and learn how to deal with them. The word outdoors might conjure up images of fields or parks, but not every child has access to those kinds of spaces, and not every parent or carer is able to take them. Playing outdoors doesn't need to be about running through a meadow. Actually, just being outside is a great opportunity for creative, unstructured play. Children can tell us what the play looks like, says Dan. If you're going to go around the block, ask the child what game you should play. Even if it's just a 15-minute walk, they'll come up with a game. How many red cars are there? How many squirrels? Trying not to step on the cracks in the pavement. Dan also told us that recently, 
educational psychologists have been advocating for unstructured, child-led play. At school or in organized sports, adults tend to lead the activities. But when children are allowed to lead, let their creativity take over and negotiate the structure of a game, it can be really beneficial. If children are in a basketball court with a ball, the adult expectation might be, right, well, we play basketball, that's what we do. However, you give children a ball on a basketball court and maybe they're playing cannonballs on a pirate ship, and that's absolutely fine. The basketball court walls are like the edge of the world as they know it. The children are able to be creative, independent and autonomous over their play. All things that we know contribute to better well-being. Now let's play another game. Hide and Seek is of course a childhood classic. You probably remember playing it yourself. But here's a quick refresher and a reminder about staying safe. Hide and Seek has been a big hit for generations because it's so straightforward. The seeker counts to 20, or however high they wish, while the others hide. Then the seeker has to find everyone. As soon as you've been found, you join up with the seeker and look for everyone else. But make sure you set boundaries about how far away you can hide, especially if you're in a big park. Very young children should hide with an adult or a responsible teenager. If all this talk of games and play has inspired you, then how about getting together in a park or public space to play on a Saturday morning for a free, inclusive activity? We definitely think it sounds like a great idea. Let's find out more about Park Play, an initiative that's helping kids and their families to do just that. Park Play brings communities and families together to play games and activities. We asked Park Play's Rick Jenner what it's all about. We wanted to bring free, fun, inclusive, welcoming social activity to parks and open spaces particularly to help improve people's physical and mental health, he explains. In a country where so many of us live in flats or houses with small gardens, the Park Play team wanted to offer a new kind of access to parks and open spaces that everyone could enjoy. A couple of hours of free play on a Saturday. Each Park Play event is run by play leaders, but the sessions are not about coaching, they're really informal. It's all about people enjoying themselves and walking around with a smile on their face, Rick says. We provide equipment and we also have an app which has a whole range of different games and activities. People can play everything from warm-up games and tag right through to a park version of a sport. So it looks different every week. But basically, the leaders give each event a bit of structure so that people feel like they're involved in something and create a really nice, buzzing atmosphere. You don't have to be good at sport to come along to park play. That's irrelevant, laughs Rick. It's about enjoyment and participation and connecting with other people. It's amazing how people playing together quickly sparks connections and conversations. As soon as you're kicking a football or chucking a frisbee to someone or running around like headless chickens trying to grab a sash off somebody, you very quickly get into a chat with someone you'd never otherwise talk to. It's also totally intergenerational, he adds. So we have people in their 70s and 80s come down, and they'll get involved. Maybe after a Saturday park run, you see a park play team setting up in the same space. Perhaps park play sounds like the sort of thing your family would enjoy together. It's two hours of free, informal, non-competitive fun, says Rick. We're creating a safe, welcoming space, and it's run by people in the community. Park Play sounds like such a great way to meet new people, not just for the children, but for adults too. There might be a Park Play near your local park run. Why not check it out? And now here's one final game to give you that inspiration to get playing. Poddy123, Blocky123, Pom Pom Home. What you call this game really depends on where you grew up. It has loads of different names, but the rules are pretty much the same. It's hide and seek meets tag. Find a base. That could be a tree or a bin, something like that. Someone stays at base, closes their eyes and counts to 20, while the rest of you hide. The aim is to get back to touch the base before you are seen. If the person at base spots you on your way back, you'll be out if they touch the base and shout your name and where you are before you get back. In some versions, they must also shout the name of the game itself. 
I'm sure some of you are now reminiscing all about your own favourite childhood games. It's enough to make anyone nostalgic. Now, for our next feature, we're going to take a look at running clubs and how they might not be what you think they are. When, in fact, is a running club not a running club? Are you enjoying your Saturday 5k park run and interested in running further or perhaps running more often? Maybe you'd like to do a bit more, but you're not sure where to go for advice. Perhaps you've even considered joining a running club, but contacting one can seem like a big step. You might not feel that you're quick enough or you worry about being left behind. And when you look at the club's social media, does anyone in the pictures look like you? Don't worry. There's a new breed of running club evolving alongside the more traditional versions. They are about creating a space where everyone feels safe to run, at their own pace and in their own way, just like Parkrun. They're all about being a part of a community, making friends and opening doors to new activities. Clubs might get people together in person for a run, or they might be a virtual online community. You don't always need to sign up formally or pay a fee to join in. Here are a few non-traditional running clubs that we hope will inspire you. Our first stop is to an online community called Your Marathon, though it's definitely not just about the long-distance races. Claire Nicholson has created Your Marathon as a virtual space to support runners of all abilities. I've been a runner for many years, she says, but only recently have I truly found my pace. It's not been a straightforward progression, though. In 2011, I underwent spinal fusion for an S-shaped curve in my spine. It wasn't long ago that Claire found the confidence to even describe herself as a runner. She says, Running clubs can feel elitist, with success riding on personal bests. We have such a tendency to be self-deprecating, but it doesn't have to be this way. Your Marathon is Claire's online platform. It champions inclusivity, and you don't have to be taking part in a marathon to join in. It's a platform where runners of all types and backgrounds can find inclusive groups and share their stories. Everyone has a story to tell, and that's what this platform is for, explains Claire. This space isn't just for those completing marathons. We all face challenges that feel so overwhelming they may as well be a marathon. This initiative is about acknowledging every victory, large or small, and encouraging everyone to start their own unique journey. Next, we'll hear a bit more about a club called Spider Runners, another inclusive, supportive group which operates both online and in real life. Susan Mansfield and Mike Bullock started Spider Runners with a clear goal. We wanted to form a fully inclusive run community where pace wasn't a focus, a supportive place where the person at the back is just as important as the person at the front. Spider Runners is both a Facebook group, Susan calls it a truly supportive running community, and a real-life meetup based on the Bedfordshire-Hertfordshire border. Spider Runners want members to enjoy the countryside and all the mental health benefits that come from being outside. They host trail runs or walks on the last Sunday of every month. Spider Runners is a safe and inclusive running community, Susan explains. There's never any pressure. We just believe in friendship and fun. We want to get more people safely out on the trails. With our last Sunday of the month events, members can join us for a guided run or walk knowing that the route has been safely checked and planned with a fantastic coffee shop at the end. We all love an activity where we know someone else has planned the route and we don't get lost. Now our next club has an interesting name. It's called the Left-Handed Giant Run Club. Let's find out more. Left-Handed Giant Run Club describe themselves as the run club for everyone. Based out of the two Left-Handed Giant Brewery pubs in Bristol, They run twice a week. Founder Jay Medway explains why she started the club. When you're an adult, I think finding new friends can be hard. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to make my own run club with the policy that no one's left behind. You're not allowed to leave until the last person gets back and everybody's clapping. And if you want to stay for a drink, you can stay. It's basically a youth club for adults so people can find their people. Left-Handed Giant Run Club is based on a concept of community, where runners of all standards share routes. It's a place to put your sprints aside, put your hills aside, and just have your run and enjoy it with somebody. 
If you can give somebody five minutes of your time, it can mean five million to them. Each run has a front and back runner to ensure no one is left behind. And Jay has noticed that during the darker months, more women take part. Women feel a lot safer in a big group, she says. Jay's main aim is to create a relatable club for all kinds of runners. We're just getting people out talking and moving, basically, she says. We definitely love the sound of a youth club for adults. Now it's time to head up to Glasgow and learn about the West End Roadrunners. West End Roadrunners in Glasgow is a relatively new club and as such was able to start by setting out its values, accessibility, inclusivity and transparency. Their running sessions take place at different times of the day to accommodate as many people as possible and they make a point of encouraging everyone. No one is turned away because of their pace and other club members are on hand to help and support new runners by sharing their own experiences through a buddy system. Inclusivity also extends to building connections, both through training and social events. The whole purpose is to boost people's confidence to build friendships so they can run together, says Graham Jack from the club. West End Roadrunners also consider inclusivity in the kit they offer to members. They don't insist on vests, for example, giving the options of t-shirts and hoodies. It's our intention to break down that perception of what running clubs are, Graham explains. We want people to feel comfortable when they're running, and it might seem like a small thing, but it's a really significant signal that we're not like a traditional running club. We are more accessible. Accessibility, inclusion and also friendship are also at the heart of the next club we are going to learn about today. Black girls do run. Let's hear from the founder. It's not a traditional run club, says Tasha Thompson who founded Black Girls Do Run in 2019. It's so much more than running. It's about community, friendship, support and encouragement. Black Girls Do Run's mission is to encourage health, wellness and friendship by inspiring, encouraging and motivating black women to run. They meet in London, but that doesn't mean you have to live in London to be a member. All the runners are connected every Saturday when they share park run photos on the club's social platform. The group runs mean everyone is included, but can still run at a speed that's comfortable for them. People are always worried about being left behind, explains Tasha. So we say run at your own pace, but if you start to break away from the group, turn around and join the runners at the back. Everyone stays together. Tasha hopes to inspire black women to run when they see someone who looks like you shares your social norms in Black Girls Do Run's photos. We want to plant that little seed of possibility, she says. The next group we'll visit is down on the south coast, in Portsmouth. Solent Stormers is a group for adults with learning difficulties. Stormers are all about fun and fitness. Will Dunkerson, a learning disability community nurse, is a run leader with Portsmouth-based Solent Stormers, a running and walking group for adults with learning disabilities. For us, he explains, the focus is trying to have a bit of fun while we're trying to get a bit fitter. Solent Stormers meet on Tuesdays in the Hillsea Promenade area and with three run-walk groups. All paces are catered for. Once a month, the group also tries a different fitness activity. They've had a go at a lot of different things, including trampolining, crazy golf, rounders and cheerleading. The group leaders are trained in supporting adults with learning disabilities but also encourage and assist group members if they want to gain a run leader qualification themselves. And now to one final group, Muslim runners. Their focus is on improving physical and mental well-being, no matter whether you're a brand new runner or you've been to parkrun for years. It's a sense of belonging, explains Mubarak Sheikh. A sense of purpose where we can come together as a community and enjoy running. The good thing is that everyone's there together, from experienced runners to someone who's just started their running journey. All paces are welcome. Mubarak is mindful of health inequalities in South Asian communities, particularly in terms of diabetes and blood pressure issues, which is why he stresses that Muslim runners is open to all types of runners, people who are getting active for the first time as well as people training for a marathon. We don't want to put anyone off because people think they might not feel comfortable or might not fit in, he says. The group arranges regular parkrun meetups in Leicester, Birmingham, London and Preston and also offers a virtual and real-life training and nutrition support, particularly during Ramadan. Training while fasting is a massive challenge in itself, says Mubarak. Muslim runners have also attended big running events, such as the London Marathon in the Big Half, 
Although Mubarak stresses that the group is a community rather than focused on races, we just want people to get out there and improve their physical and mental well-being. It's great to hear about such a diverse range of groups with different goals, but so much focus on inclusivity and community. Of course, there are a lot more groups and clubs out there too. Here's how you can find out more about what's happening near you. These running groups and clubs are only a few examples of the many inclusive running communities in the UK today. There may well be one near you. Running clubs aren't all about athletics, cross-country and running as fast as you can. The focus is often on friendship, community and inspiring each other to have a go in a safe and inclusive way. Why not check out Run Together, the UK-wide organisation whose groups pride themselves on being fun, friendly, supportive and inclusive. Or Run Talk Run and Walk Talk Walk groups, which are part of a global mental health running and walking community. So there you go. Why not have a look and see if there's a group that's just right for you, whether it's walking or running. With so many to choose from and so many different communities, we hope you find one that's just the right fit for you. And that also brings this episode to an end. Thanks for joining us and do come back for episode three, when we will be talking about families growing up with Parkrun and how communities spring up around Saturday and Sunday morning events. Join us then. And goodbye for now. Thank you for listening to Parkrun Magazine. We hope you liked the features and enjoyed our simple ways to take steps towards a happier and healthier life. To find out more about your local Parkrun event or collect a free copy of the printed magazine, head over to magazine.parkrun.com. Parkrun Magazine is created by Parkrun, with the audio version made possible through production by Like the Wind Media and Runcom. If you enjoyed listening, please remember to subscribe, leave a review or share it with others. That's all for this episode. We hope you enjoy the next one.